All right, Stefano Smith, you have a few questions for me. Question number one. Do you know about the game called Fallout 3? And if you have, can you do a walkthrough of it? Uh, I know of it, of course. Uh, I played Fallout 1 when I was younger and kind of enjoyed that. Never got into Fallout 2. And Fallout 3, no, sorry, it's it's open world and I don't really like the, the, uh, the post-apocalyptic world that the Fallout game have. You know, I don't know. It just doesn't resonate with me. I'm sorry. Uh, question number two. What is your favorite movie? Oh, okay. I haven't decided yet. It's either Empire Strikes Back, uh, Return of the Jedi, or Return of the King. Uh, I like Return of the Jedi because of all the space battles. I love space. Everyone else wants to be Jedi when they were younger. I want to be a fighter pilot. <laughs> uh, I like The Empire Strikes Back because of the, the, the darker tone and good character development. And Return of the King is just an awesome, epic fantasy movie. So, oh, I don't know. Uh, I think I have to say... Return of the Jedi because of all the uh, the uh, space space battles. So Return of the Jedi. Who is your favorite author? Uh, George R. R. Martin. Uh, I remember reading his books about ten years ago, and he does things that no other author do. Do it's 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 it's. it's one of a kind kind of guy. And I remember thinking for myself, am I allowed to think that something is better than Tolkien uh, in the fantasy genre? Because he was just that good, you know? He's, his character developments, he, uh, well, every character has a reason to do what they do. They don't just do it because they're evil, you know? Uh, it's, it also seems very realistic. Uh, it's a... It's a fancy book for adults. And it's totally, totally awesome. And if you haven't seen... If you don't want to, to, to uh, read the books, which I really recommend... Uh, uh, go watch the uh, the uh, series that's going on right now for A Game of Thrones. Uh, not as good as the books, but it's it's very good for what it for, for what it is, absolutely. And uh, oh, it's just it's just such a good ga uh, game game, uh, good book and good series. So go watch it. Question number four. What is your second most favorite gaming series? Okay, so my favorite gaming series is Mass Effect. So that's out of the way. Uh, for something to qualify as a series, uh, it has to have at least two games. So what is your second most favorite gaming series? Okay, um... It's, it's difficult because every game is good for different reasons. We have the God of War series, which is a spectacular fighting game, uh, which is really good, uh, uh, really good, you know, doing what it does. We have the Dead Space game, which is probably my favorite uh, horror games. Uh, we have StarCraft, which is my favorite RTS game series, uh, which unexpectedly turned into a quite a good love story, which I love. So, <laughs> woohoo! Uh, we have Battlefield series, uh, the Battlefield series, which is my favorite FPS gaming series. Uh, Dragon Age for pure RPG. And we also have Baldur's Gate for nostalgia's sake. So, I don't know, I don't know, man. 
all of those. I'm 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 checking out here and, and, and saying that. Because they're all good for different reasons. <coughs> Alright. Charlie has some questions for me. So let's get started. Question number one. What games as a kid did you love so much, but looking back or replaying now feel like they aren't very good games after all? Uh, this is weird, because I can't really think of any. Uh, the games I played were pretty good for their times. Um, maybe I just, you know, forget the bad ones. You know, I guess I can I can't say this though. Uh, starting up Border Skate again. Uh, the graphics are pretty bad. <laughs> I've forgotten how bad the graphics were. No, when I played back then, it was it was cool. It looked good. Now, not so much. But you know, graphics isn't everything. Uh, question number two: What's the very first game you remember playing as a kid? Uh, this was on the Commodore 64. It's it's quite blurry. Uh, you're asking me to look quite a while back. But I think the game was, uh, I think I think it was called Fury. Um, Commodore 64, like an arcade space shooter. You you had your you had your ship, and it could go around the screen like this, and you shot inwards at at uh, at sprites. Uh, at least that's the first game I remember playing that I really enjoyed. Uh, question number three: What console? including PC, is your favorite, and why? Uh, PC, hands down. I've always been a PC gamer. Uh, and I like it because it can be upgraded to, to keep up with the current uh, tech trends, you know? Uh, I like the keyboard and mouse, and I never really had a console. I didn't, have, I didn't even have a um, Nintendo when I was younger, NES. It was all Commodore, then Atari, then the PC. Uh, and I, I, I can't, I can't shoot stuff with a controller. I know, I know people who can do it perfectly fine. It just, I, my, I can't get my head around it, you know. Uh, with some training, I'll probably be able to do it, but I often just stick to the PC version if there is one. Unfortunately, some, some games don't exist on the PC. I want to play Heavy Rain, which I will, and The Last of Us uh, on the uh, PS3. So, wish me luck. Uh, question number four. Which console do you feel have uh, has the best game selection uh, if PC is still a valid option, if PC is still a, a valid option, uh, I would pick that. You know, with Steam, the Steam library, it's and many of the the uh, console games are, are ported to PC as well. So PC hands down, if that's a valid option. If not, I'd say uh, PS3, because Heavy Rain. Uh, the Last of Us, God of War, all games I really enjoy. Okay, uh, I don't know about The Last of Us and Heavy Rain, but it seems like games I would really enjoy. Uh, and God of War, I really enjoy. And, you know, I don't play 3DS or Nintendo Wii or anything like that. It's not my, my style. Uh, I can't do portable games. Uh, I want it big, you know, big screen, big computer. Ah, it's lovely. So, where was I? Yeah, PC. Question number five. Which games would you consider your guilty pleasures? Uh, at the moment, I don't really have any guilty pleasure games. 
but I did have one back in the day. Uh, a it was a a like a a dating sim, um, like a hentai dating sim called True Love, which I played quite a bit. Not just because of all the naked ladies, but you know, you you really want to 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 finish the game. You know, you want to date these girls and get all the different endings and stuff like that. Uh, it was quite fun, actually. Which I wouldn't have never thought I would say about an, ero uh, an erotic game, but it was true love. I wouldn't play. I wouldn't play today, but back in the day, it was really something, something else. Question number six. What is your fondest memory involving a video game? Okay, first one is from Ball Skate, so if you haven't played that, uh, I'm gonna put up my spoiler hand again. Uh, okay, spoiler begins. My first fondest memory involving a video game, uh, one of my fondest mem memories is the Nashkel Mines in Baldur's Gate. Uh, remember, this was in 98, so sometime around there. And your mission is to go to these mines, you know. And you have this, this. you have heard rumors about these mines, but you know, no, nothing concrete, you know. Uh, you had rumors, uh, it, it was some kind of mystery down there to be solved, and I love that. And I entered the, the map, uh, where the uh, entrance to the mine were, and the weather, it, it's, it's, it's uh, randomly generated, you know, night, day, rain, lightning and all that. But when I entered this map, it started to rain, it was night, and you could hear lightning off in distance. And this combined with the mysterious backstory of the mine, it just the atmosphere the atmosphere was just spot on. Here I was with my adventuring party, ready to unravel a mystery in the mines, and oh, just that feeling I had in my chest at that time, and I knew that I would love RPGs forever. So how about that? That's, that's, that's my first fond memory. And the second uh, great memory I have is from Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, spoiler hand again, if you haven't played Knights of the Old Republic, uh, then uh, turn off the sound and uh, I'll turn, take the hand down when I'm finished with the spoiler. Okay, let's do this. All right. The Revan reveal in Knights of the Old Republic just blew my mind. I did not see that coming. And even now, just thinking about it, I get goosebumps. And I remember, remember slowly realizing when the, the cutscene comes on that, wow, wow, I am, I'm the bad guy. And I have been all along. And the signs were there. And oh, it was just so mind blowing. I just remember, I remember standing up and just, my 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 joy is dropping to the floor when this came up. It was so well done. One of the best reveals and 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 turns uh, in terms of story in a game ever. All right. Question number seven. If you could pick, <coughs> wow, my throat. All right, if you could pick anyone, living or dead, fictional or real, to be your co-op gaming partner, who would you pick and what kinds of games would you see yourself playing with them? <laughs> okay, so let's... I'm going to, to stay with real people, but... Okay, there's two actors that I would love to co-op with. Uh, one would be Samuel L. Jackson, who would do a, a 
first person shooter game. And uh man, I can I can just I can just hear Samuel Jackson cursing and shooting all over the place. That would it, so cool. Uh, I would also uh, like to play a game with Morgan Freeman, just because of his voice. Uh, probably some kind of RPG co-op game. I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, just, I'm just imagining his voice now talking, so... But, if we could keep it a little bit more real... Uh, I rather like I rather like Angel Arts Angel Arts style of gaming, um, the way he he uh, thinks about his, think about his, his uh, choices, and uh, I would love to do a co-op game with him. Uh, there's no such game uh, as yet, I think, but a co-op role-playing game with heavy choices. Uh, I think that would would uh, be totally incredible to play with Angel Arts because we have our goal are often aligned. You know, we want to do the good, correct thing, but our ways there are not always always the same. I am very much a law and order guy. Uh, I wouldn't say pragmatic, but on the verge of pragmatic. Uh, while Angel Arts so far has played characters who are more willing to to do what is right because it's the right thing to do. You know? And us playing a RPG with heavy choices in it. You know, I could see ourselves on a bridge of a capital ship, starship looking down on the planet below and it's been infested by aliens my choice would be to nuke the planet to save the 10 other planets that would be in its path while angel artists might want to uh, go down and save as many as they can even if time is short and if there's a, a uh, chance of doing it and then come back and then perhaps nuke the planet and our banter back and forth that would be pretty cool I think and if you okay one more step Charlie uh, is also one of the the uh, LPs I would like like to do some some co-oping with uh, and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to do it in a, a, a multiplayer uh, Mass Effect uh, live stream in, in a week or so. But I can just imagine Charlie being on this bridge with me and Angel Loss as well. Uh, and she has a very gentle soul. You do, Charlie. It's, 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 it's nice to see. You want to do the best for everyone. You don't want to sacrifice anything. Uh, but that would totally clash with my my uh, my uh, morality in this choice. Uh, can you see me saying, you know, let's nuke the site from orbit, you know? And Charlotte's going, no, let's save everyone! And Angelos in the middle trying to, you know, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's think this through. It would be really cool. But yeah, my answer would be uh, Samuel Jackson, Morgan Freeman. Uh, yourself, Charlie, and Angel Arts. So, question number eight. Excluding everything Warhammer or Dungeons and Dragons, what would you say is your favorite tabletop role-playing game? Wow, okay. Uh, so no Warhammer and no D&D. These are the games I played the most. Uh, like 90%. <coughs> or variations of them. Uh, but I would say that the Star Wars D20 RPG would be my, my third choice. It, uh, it worked well when we tried it, and I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, so... 
thumbs up for that. So, yeah. Star Wars D20 RPG. Number nine. Favorite millionaire superhero. Uh, I'm not a huge, huge superhero fan. I don't know many superheroes. <clears throat> I know the basic ones. But I never really enjoyed them all that much. But I had to say that Tony Stark as Iron Man is awesome. Uh, a high-tech guy. Uh, he's got this dry, really sarcastic humor, and he's still a very flawed character. Um, and he's high-tech. I mean, he's got a cool suit of armor. What's not to love about that? So, Tony Stark, Iron Man. Question number 10. DC or Marvel? Okay, so I don't know anything about superheroes. So, I had to Google it. And after watching the pictures, I had to say Marvel. They are cooler. And number 11. Do I get cookies for asking a whole 10 questions? Of course, I'll send them over Origin later. Alright, thank you Charlie for your questions. Now we have questions from Kane Benedict, which is still an awesome name by the way. First question is, what do you think makes a good villain slash antagonist? Antagonist. Well, I like a villain who has clear motives for being a villain, not just evil for evil's sake, you know, he, he's got some reason to be a villain. And I also like someone you can relate to, you know, maybe he lost his family, maybe he uh, got uh, hurt by love or something like that. I also like a, a thinking man's villain, um, a villain with a code of honor and someone who respects his adversaries. Um, and a villain don't really need to be evil per se, he just might have a different moral thought or moral compass than yourself. So yeah. And the second question is... Who would you say are your top three favorite video game villains uh, or antagonists? Okay, there's quite a few. I try to narrow it down. Uh, I like, uh, you know, it would be easy to say Logan, uh, Elusive Man, um, Saren, but I'm going to uh, put those on the back burner. Let's try something else. So first off, John Renicus from Baldur's Gate 2. David Warner is awesome as John Renicus. Uh, I like Alma from Fear. Uh, and I like Darth Malak from uh, Star Wars The Old Republic. The Knights of the Old Republic. But then again, you have Adrian Rittberger from, uh, from Full Throttle. You know, as um, Mark Hamill did a great great uh, voice for him. Uh, you have Kane from the Command & Conquer series. And, but I say, okay, pick three. John Aranicus, Alma, and uh, Darth Malak. Alright, let's see. Uh, question number three. Have you ever role-played a completely different kind of character from your usual in a video game slash D&D? game. So yeah, have you ever role played a completely different kind of character from the usual? You know, my usual is like a tank. Uh, someone who can take quite the beating, law and order, all of that. And yes, I have. Uh, I once played a character named Yoon, who was a rogue who grew up in a brothel and later became an adventurer. You know, with his huge backpack, like a vagabond adventurer, traveler, explorer. It was quite fun to play. 